Alright guys, I want to share with you about this movie, The Happiness of the Katakuris. This movie is directed by Takashi Miike, and <clears throat> he's one of my favorite directors. <clears throat> Japanese director, this is a Japanese film with English subtitles. And uh, he's made a lot of movies, I haven't seen them all, but I've seen some of his biggest hits. And Audition is his number one movie, uh, that's what I would say, it's probably what a lot of people would say. <clears throat> I love his movie Gozu a lot, and then his movie Visitor Q is crazy. Basically, he makes some really crazy horror movies. They're not all horror movies, <clears throat> but he makes movies about, you know, the Yakuza or Samurais. Uh, Itchy the Killer is one of his huge movies that's based on a manga. Anyway, <clears throat> his movies are really good. And uh, this one didn't let me down. I knew that it would be something I was interested in because I've heard it's so bizarre. It's like a crazy zombie musical is what a lot of people say. Although I don't really think it has a lot to do with zombies. But uh, this movie is a mix between comedy, horror, and a musical. And it has animation, like clay animation. And uh, it was a great experience. It's definitely something I'd watch again. So I've looked on YouTube for clips of this movie and you know what I see is uh, this clip at the beginning of this this diner with this woman and I can play it from the beginning but basically there's a, a crazy scene at the beginning I already saw on YouTube and I'm glad that it happens right at the beginning so uh, it wasn't you know it was one of the crazy parts of the movie but it's not you know, there's lots of great scenes in this movie. And, uh, but it's a clay animation scene, and there's a woman in a diner, and she sticks her fork or whatever into the soup, and there's like this demon angel thing, creature that she pulls out, and, uh, and she screams, and like she turns into clay animation, it's like a live action thing, and then she turns into clay animation, and this demon thing's like clay animated or whatever. When she opens her mouth and screams, like he sees her uvula, uvula or whatever, her tonsils, and it looks like a heart, and so he's like, oh, like, he wants that, so he, like, reaches in and, like, stretches it out and, like, rips it out of her mouth. It's crazy, so you'll see it in a little bit, but it gives you some of the ideas of some of these crazy clay animation scenes, and there's, there's a few of them in there, and there's a crazy one at the end. But basically, talk about the movie. This is kind of just a weird beginning, and I'm not really sure what all this ties into the movie. Um, I guess those women are in the movie later on. Let's see. But basically... This family's about, or this movie's about a family, and um, there's like a grandfather, and then there's these parents and their kids, and then they have like a a, a grandchild too. So the grandfather's like a great grandfather, but the dad of the family is like a shoe salesman, and he loses his job, and they tell him there's supposed to be some big road that's going to be built, and it's going to bring in a lot of traffic and like you'll have work again or something and I don't know all the details but somehow they make their home into like a bed and breakfast basically and this road doesn't get built and so they're just waiting around and there's these random travelers that show up and to stay at their home and the first traveler is a little strange and uh, <laughs> isn't that so bizarre that's crazy but yeah, there's lots of stuff in this movie like you've never seen anywhere else. And some of this stuff reminds me of Tim Burton. And there's some parts in this movie that remind me of Beetlejuice, and I was wondering what it, what it was, but it's... In some of the musical scenes, people are like flying or like levitating and floating and dancing, kind of. And it reminds me of like the ending of Beetlejuice. But yeah, I don't know if this is like a cycle of life thing, because this demon angel thing gets eaten by like a crow whatever and then the crow gets eaten and then another one of those angel demon things hatches and it's like everything starts all over again 
anyway, the strange guy comes to stay at their home. And, uh, we get kind of early, like, one of the first musical parts is where this guy is kind of, like, agonizing, like, he's, he's talking about some grim situations, like death or something, like he's going to face death, and he, one of the, the sons brings him a beer to his room because he requested it, and he asks the son, like, if you only had one day to live, what would you do tomorrow? And he's like, huh? Like, <laughs> so we get the, this idea that this guy's going to die. Well, like, the later that night, they hear something or whatever, they go to his room, and uh, they find him dead, like, with the key, like, shoved in his neck or whatever. And they freak out, and they go into a musical, and they're like, that he committed suicide, like, what are we going to do, and stuff, <laughs> like, the musicals in this aren't, like, huge musical numbers, it's weird, like, they play music, and they're just, like, talking about their situation or whatever, but it's really good, like, the music's really good, I was actually impressed by, like, how awesome it was, I shouldn't be impressed by Takashi Miike, because I expect him, but... So they freak out because this guy committed suicide, and they're like, should we call the police? And they're like, does this look like a suicide? You know, it looks like a murder. Like, this isn't usually how people would kill themselves. Like, we don't need to call the police. So they decide they're just going to bury the body, just get rid of the body, and just never talk about it again. And that's like the grandfather. And this is weird, too. He kills a bird with, like... So there's a lot of funny scenes in this movie that made me laugh out loud, and I laughed out loud like when they discovered that guy's body and the grandpa's like, suicide! <laughs> like, uh, there's a part like late at night when uh, basically I'm just going to go back to the main title screen. But Um, I think before that stranger comes, it's like a dark night or something, and the father, like, walks in late to dinner, and they're kind of creeped out about who's coming in, and, um, uh, he startles all of them, and the grandpa's like, idiot, like, yells really loud, <laughs> I just thought it was funny, uh, at the beginning, uh, they're worried about people coming, and, I think it's like the dad gets in this giant swing that they have, and he's like, look at the swing, like, they'll come just for the swing, like, they'll love it, and he's swinging back and forth like he's crazy, and the swing unhinges, and then he, like, flies over this fence, like, over a cliff, like, into the water, <laughs> so, a lot of just goofy stuff in this movie. Well, they bury that body, and they end up getting some other weird visitors that end up dying, like, one after the other, and they keep burying the bodies, basically. And, uh, so this, fa this whole family, like, knows about, you know, covering up these, they didn't kill these people, they killed themselves or died because of whatever reasons, but they're hiding the bodies anyway. And, uh, so, you know, they're kind of, like, in the wrong for not telling the police or anything about this stuff. They're just trying to cover it up. But this this weird character up there who, uh, meets the daughter and like she falls in love with him and he says like he's from the US Navy but he's a Japanese guy it turns out he's like a criminal and he makes up these bizarre off-the-wall lies and she believes him and anyway there's you know uh, he steals an ashtray from the their place and the grandpa has fallen him, he's suspect or something, and the grandpa attacks him, and they kind of get into a brawl, and it turns into another clay animation scene where they're, like, hanging off a cliff by, like, a, a rope or whatever, and the daughter ends up kicking a rock over and hitting this guy in the head, and then he falls, but he doesn't die. He ends up crawling back into the bed and breakfast place. Well... After they've buried a number of bodies, they bury it by this river or this lake or whatever. And they find out, like, well, this is where the road's going to be built. So, like, they're like, oh, my God, they're going to, like, dig up the place. So we're going to have to, like, move the bodies or whatever. Well, there ends up being 
the river or whatever ends up like washing up the bodies, I think. And there's like a musical scene where you see the bodies kind of like zombified or like these rotted corpses and they're singing along. But I don't really think it doesn't really have anything to do with zombies. Like they're not really alive, it's just like for this musical scene because they're like, kind of freaking out about what's going to happen. Well, there ends up being a family that comes there and they're like, we might as well prepare for the worst. So they go and dig a big hole like they're going to prepare for the people to die and to bury them. And it turns out like they don't die. And they see them digging the hole and they're like, what's that for? And they're like, oh, this is for the garbage. And they're like, oh, okay. And so they're like, we dug this hole for nothing, you know. Well, there's another criminal that's like running from the law. He just murdered his girlfriend or whatever. And he's like running through the trees and stuff and he falls into the pit and they bring him into the home like knocked out and the police are on his tail and they don't know anything about what he's done or what's going on and he wakes up and he's freaking out trying to escape the house and so the police start coming and the whole family freaks out because they think the police have discovered that they buried the bodies and, you know, they're done for. And that's one of my favorite musical numbers when the grandpa is talking about, like, turning himself into the police. He's like, I'll go, like, I'll take the blame for everything. And then, like, the grandson's like, no, like, it was my fault. And then the dad's like, no, I'm the one who came up with the idea to bury the bodies. I'll go. And... The grandpa walks towards the police and he basically has his hands out like for them to handcuff him. <laughs> and uh, they're like, we're looking for this criminal or whatever, you know. And so they just go past him and that criminal has the the mom by, by her throat with a knife like in the house, like he's taking her hostage now. And there's a scene where the he comes outside with her with the knife and the dad's like begging to you know to take him hostage instead to spare his wife and everything and he ends up he does end up letting her go but he like lunges at the dad and then the son comes and saves the dad or whatever and He's got blood on his hands, and they all surround him like he's dying. He's like, I'm sorry that I was a bad son and everything. And and then it turns out like he just got scraped by the knife, and he's fine. And then at the, after that scene, it goes into, like, complete madness, because I guess they're living, like, on Mount Fuji or by Mount Fuji, and they look at it, and it, like, explodes. And then there's, like, it goes into a comp- clay animation scene, and there's, like, a huge mudslide, and... The family's like, let's all gather together and get the dog and let's save each other and save the house. And It goes into a crazy scene. That's like the grand finale. And uh, at the end there's this song. And it's funny because they're like all celebrating and dancing. Like what you're seeing right now that's playing in the background is basically the ending of the movie. Like when they're happy. Like, everything's, like, restored and happy, and they don't have to worry about anything anymore. They're over, like, all the darkness and everything. And, anyway, like, they all have their hands up in the air and stuff, and then, you know, it pauses the song, and it's, like, a year later, like, Grandpa died, and then, like, he, like, goes down. (laughs) And it's just crazy. So some of the horror elements in this film is, like, after the dad after they bury, like, the first guy, um, he kind of has, like, nightmares of his body, like, popping up in certain areas. <laughs> like, he's, like, he, he's in the refrigerator or whatever, and it's pretty creepy, like, the effects and the, the music and just the mood of the scene is kind of creepy. But there's not massively major horror elements in the movie. There are some, but uh, it's not, like, really gory or bloody or anything like that. It's just kind of like a dark, I think it's more of like a dark comedy in a way because it deals with death and stuff and they're burying these bodies. 
And like I said, there, there is a lot of comedy. There's a lot of funny scenes. One of the couples that come to their bed and breakfast is like a sumo wrestler and this like tiny girl that he's dating. And they go up and he's making love to her, and you know he's basically like crushing her. And it's just it's just messed up. But he they end up dying, and so they they see he's dead, and they're like, "Where's the girl?" And she's like stuck underneath them. I forgot that I have an alarm clock going off. Let me get that. Okay, that sucks. I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, we'll just go with it. But, yeah, so it's funny. They see the sumo wrestler dead, and they're like, where's the where's the woman? And then they find out, like, she's smushed underneath him, and she's dead, too. And they're like, he's too big to, like, bag up and stuff. Like, how are we, are we going to chop him up, or, like, what are we going to do with him? <laughs> and they decide to, like, drop him out the window. And, oh, there's just so much in this movie. Like I said, the musical numbers are great, but they're not, like, big extravagant. Like, what you would expect, they're not really what you expect from a normal musical, I don't think. To me, it was different. They were kind of shorter, and there was just people kind of talking about their situation. There are some bigger ones, like when she falls in love with this guy, and there's a big, like, in love musical part huh. see, I can see what it, I can read what it says in the back Takashi Miike's The Happiness of the Katakuris and the Katakuris is the name of the family I think that's like their last name or whatever and at the beginning they have like the great granddaughter playing you've seen that like when it starts after all that clay animation stuff and she's like, you know, I always wondered, like, what makes a family happy or whatever. And they kind of go into what... And she kind of explains how her her grandpa worked at the shoe factory and everything. It's a quirky black comedy. Think Shallow Grave meets the Japanese classic cult film Crazy Family. And now imagine it with songs, dance numbers, and animated sequences. Loosely bla based on the Korean black comedy Quiet Family, this extraordinary genre blending remake tells the story of a modern dysfunctional family and their shared dream of opening an inn in the country. Despite all their best efforts, the inn has the unfortunate habit of attracting guests who all turn up dead in the morning. The Katakuris do their utmost to make a success of the place, despite the growing number of guests now planted in the grove behind the house. In tune with this quirky story, the film mixes movie genres and styles with abandon. Some sequences are filmed using claymation, as in a musical, the characters suddenly burst into song and spontaneously start dancing as the mood takes them. There's even an incredible subplot with a Japanese con man who claims to be the bastard son of Queen Elizabeth of England, and that's the crazy criminal liar guy that she falls in love with. The movie features an all-star cast, and yeah, basically it's a, a black comic musical that will have viewers cheering for the Katakuri family as they battle against the odds and their bodies. I don't know if there's any movies I can personally compare this to, think of. I know there was a zombie musical that I like, um, Dead and Breakfast, but, you know, it actually has to deal with zombies. I really don't think this has anything to do with zombies. But, I mean, even on here, it says, you know, too awesome to miss, maybe this year's supreme masterpiece, a delirious splatter musical that imagines what might have happened if the Von Trapp family had wandered into Dawn of the Dead. So that gives you the idea that it has a lot to do with zombies, but it doesn't. I don't think that's really... Oh, well, there's not really a lot of, like, blood splatter, but, I mean, it does deal with death, again. There is blood. 
<sighs> but it's just like these circumstances just keep getting worse and worse and they're just trying to deal with them. They're dealing with it in a wrong way. It does kind of remind me a little bit of uh, Very Bad Things, which is a really good dark comedy too, where this guy has like a bachelor party and they hire like a hooker or this dancer and she ends up getting murdered on accident and they get rid of her body and they all keep it secret and then you know stuff happens to them they go crazy over time uh, I don't know all I can say is that I recommend it I thought it was really good there's nothing really it was, it was never really boring it kept me interested the whole time and the musical parts really impressed me the animation was great and some of the craziest stuff that I've seen So yeah, there's a lot that I'm missing out on talking about, but I don't know what else to say at this point. So check it out if you're into weird movies, if you like foreign movies, and you like, don't mind reading subtitles, because you'll have to for this one. Uh, definitely check this out. Alright, and I don't know where I'd rank this on, you know, the number of the movies that I've seen of his. It's really high up there, I mean, but all of his movies are high up there, so it's hard to categorize them. Usually his movies are a lot more serious, or darker, or, you know. He's just a great director, though. He's definitely, like, in my top five directors. So I'd say David Lynch and David Cronenberg are my favorites, and then, you know, Dario Argento and Takashi Miike, and I don't even know who would be, like, number five. Off the top of my head, I'm probably missing somebody important, but those are two of favorite, my four really tops. Alright, guys, that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching.